Hello, everyone. My name is Callum McCann. I'm an analytics engineer at Andril. I've spent the majority of my career in the data ecosystem, most recently at DBT Labs. I joined Andril just about a year ago and have spent the last year focused on our rollout of Foundry and more specifically on our usage of Foundry for demand and supply planning. So before I get into that, though, some of you may not know who Andril is or what we do. So Andril is a global defense technology company. Our mission is to transform national security capabilities with advanced technology. We're differentiated by a couple of principles. First, software is at the core of everything we do. Two, the US and our allies will gain asymmetric advantage with affordable mass. And three, a new business model is critical to moving quickly. If you are curious about any of those and what those actually mean, uh, please pull me aside later on in the conference. I'm more than happy to talk your ear off about them. But with that, let's dig into the actual problem statement. So I want to begin by saying hardware is very hard, and Anduril is a great example of why. Uh, I came from the software industry, so a lot of this has been for learnings from me as well. Anduril is a highly complicated organization who deals in an environment of uncertainty and changing needs. For example, product needs can change based on evolving conditions around the world, or our supply chains might be impacted by global conflict. And that is to say nothing of how complicated those supply chains are in the first place. Sourcing all the components for world-class hardware is difficult regardless of industry. So let's start at the beginning of this problem and walk through the process. Let's start by building our demand signal. All hardware production needs an accurate picture of what you need to build in order to prepare for that, to get all your components, hire the right people, get the right facilities, so on. At Anduril, when we first started, we were starting to build our demand plans manually. So at the time, it was the right solution. We relied upon people's expertise, we didn't waste resources trying to automate things, and we could do it all very manually. However, it was a very painful process. The planners had to aggregate information across the company, uh, growth information from our CRM, development information from our engineers, maintenance information from deployments. And then they had to consolidate all of this information into a specific format that could go into our ERP to drive supply processes. At the time, with fewer product lines than we have today, the entire process would take about one to two weeks and was an acceptable burden. As our company has scaled, we have more demand. It's a good problem to have. Uh, and we've reached higher levels of complexity. We reached the point where the manual processes weren't meeting our needs anymore. To say nothing of at-risk demand and think, you know, the, the financial risk that we need to take on in order to procure that hardware. So at, it was at this point that we were first piloting Foundry, and we quickly realized we could use Foundry to help our plan alert planners quickly and accurately build their demand plan. So to solve these problems, we started developing a suite of planning tools that we called Mercury. The first part of this was probably familiar to most of you in this room, ingesting, transforming, modeling all of the Foundry ontology. Once we'd created the foundation for that, though, with objects like items, inventory, bills and materials, I can talk your ear off about bills and materials, we spent time digging into the nuance of the demand workflow specifically and settled on the following ontology. Demand events as the atomic unit, so this is a specific piece of hardware on a particular opportunity for a particular date. This date is largely served from our CRM on an hourly refresh rate, along with a lot of nuance in, in that little line right there as well. And then demand scenario as a container all of all the demand events. This gives users the ability to create demand plans for each month, uh, different risk profiles. If we want to have a high risk scenario, a low risk scenario, they can do all of that. So now let's dig into a demo. We start on the demand planning module. Each row within this table represents a specific demand event tied to a demand scenario. In this instance, the DevCon scenario that I've created with dummy data. So each of these two rows is some dummy data for a delivery that is coming up. Let's put ourselves in the shoes of our demand planners and say that something about this demand may be wrong. In this case, we'd be able to edit all of the critical properties just in case the information is not up to date. So the item revision may have changed, this production line may have been moved to a new facility, or the quantity of the demand needs to be updated and changed based on customer feedback. Once we finalize what we want to be included, we can create a draft upload. This runs through a number of validation checks and produces the output of what is actually going to be uploaded into the ERP. Right now, you're going to see nothing on the screen because it's a demo. But in a real life scenario, you'd see a number of demand events flagged for violations, be it improper item types, invalid dates, so on and so forth. 
If any demand events don't pass our validations, you can click in and make those edits right then and there to fix whatever the issue is. As soon as we feel confident in our upload and all the tests have passed, we can upload our demand plan directly into our ERP through our integration. This upload then powers all of the supply planning processes, some of which I'll talk about later. But let's say you're a business line lead and you wanna understand what exactly demand you're committed to. In order to understand this at the highest level, we can flip over to the demand plan overview tab where we built dashboarding presentations. So you can understand what the current demand plan is broken down by business line. This module is used to lead reviews within the business line, get production line or get production leads uh, so all on sort of the same page and ensure that everyone understands what demand is. Not the most technically hard problem, but I'm sure everyone in this room can agree that getting 10 people aligned on something is actually a lot harder than expected. So now that we've gotten that alignment, we now get to take advantage of what I believe to be the greatest power of Foundry, which is the network effects of a strong data model the benefit of the Foundry ontology. Once you've defined it for a critical process, the lift to build the next process is reduced. Each derivative use case is easier. And it was around this time that we were finishing, finishing the first version of Mercury that we decided to partner with Palantir together on Warp Speed, their manufacturing operating system. Together, we've built out a simulation module that takes in the demand that we have uh, defined in Mercury and quickly runs through a material requirement, material requirements planning algorithm. For those of you who aren't familiar with what this is, this is a process that traverses the entire bill of materials for every single piece of demand and determines what you need to build, what you need to purchase, and on what time in order to meet that demand. In our ERP today, this process takes about two hours, two to four hours actually, and requires managing state in two different locations both the ERP and in Foundry. Additionally, it abstracts away from all the individual pieces of demand to just say, hey, we need 10 of this unit instead of we need five for customer A and five for customer B. In MRP Speed, the name of Foundry's simulation engine, this takes about 30 seconds and ties together every single output to a specific piece of demand. So we begin by selecting our DevCon scenario, and then we select a supply scenario. This second scenario allows us to simulate changes to the supply position and then save them across different runs. Once we hit the run button, you obviously that it see that it completes very quickly, but that's only because there's only two demand events. Upon completion, we can see a high level picture of all of our demand and how well we're able to meet these inputs. In this example, you can see that there is the quantity of required of 50 and the quantity on time of 50. In reality, this would never occur. You'd have thousands of distinct demand events and a varying range that you'd be able to meet. So let's say there was an event that you had some sort of complication. You'd then be able to click into violations. This is, again, uh, empty in our example, but in a real-life use case, you'd be able to see lead time violations, inventory stock violations, and shortages. Then we look at our planned orders. These are the outputs from MRP Speed that tell us uh, what we need to meet. For example, this second row tells me that I need a work order for 100 units on November 24th in order to meet that top level demand. But most importantly, you can click into it and see the exact demand that it ties to. So we can click into the allocations and say, what is the top level demand or the intermediate demand that this contributes to and unlocks. This is a huge unlock to our supply planners because now they can understand exactly what things output to, how much revenue they might drive and how they need to prioritize things. The biggest unlock here is from a workflow perspective. If you think about the change from two to four hours to 30 seconds, that is bare minimum a 200x increase in productivity and the ability to iterate through their, their workflows and be able to make decisions. So to close out, Foundry has helped Anderol to take the next step into the realm of real-time decision-making. And this isn't just about technology. It's how we use it to cut through complexity and say several steps ahead in a very quick moving industry. At the heart of all of this is the Foundry ontology, which I believe is the most fully featured semantic layer on the market. Even beyond the network effects and the unified analytics and operations, the big unlock for us is that it takes all of the skill sets that we've been developing as data and analytics and software engineers through our entire career and allows us to unify that into one platform. So I urge you as you reflect on today's talks, as you, you know, listen to everyone speak and you're thinking about your next project to think big because you may just be able to accomplish something that you didn't think was previously possible.